want to thank you all for coming this evening to Ash Wednesday service. It is a privilege to stand before you this evening. I don't know about you, but I need this evening. I need it a lot. I need Lent a lot. And so, in Christian tradition, we gather here on Ash Wednesday, and I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this time to begin this season of Lent as we worship our Lord and our God. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for gathering us here in your house this evening to begin this season of Lent. Lord God, we lift up those who cannot be here this, this day, those who are sick, uh, those who are tired, those who are caring for loved ones, Lord God, we pray your watch care upon each and every one. Lord God, as the scriptures have been read this evening and this gospel will be read uh, at this time, bless it, anoint it by your Holy Spirit, that in the reading and the proclaiming that our lives may be filled with your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture text this evening is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 to 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, so they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward, but when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Again, as we gather on this Ash Wednesday, I don't know about you, it also came up awfully quick on me. For some reason, I'm still back in January. But here it's March 1st, on the eve and the beginning of our Lenten celebration. And as Christians have done for over 600 years, we take this time to remember who God is, who we are in God's presence, and acknowledge that we have fallen far short of the glory of God in our, in our lives. So we, we gather here this evening to acknowledge God and to acknowledge ourselves before God. So the question this evening is, how do you receive God into your life? Are you prepared for this all-in spirituality? That is, being holy as Christ is holy. Consider this an invitation. To receive Christ in a whole new way, with joy, with celebration, with expectation, Part of Ash Wednesday is a serious thing. It's to confess who we are. 
with a penitent heart. A way of saying, God, I know I'm not the person that you would have me to be, but I am willing to give it another try if you are willing to allow me the privilege of another chance to get it right. May sound pretty simple, maybe a little bit stupid, because if God didn't give us another chance, guess what? We wouldn't be sitting here right now. Our past can weigh us down like a ton of bricks. And what we have done could hold us captives all through our lives, keeping us from living a life in abundance that God has created for us and has intended for us to live through the beginning of time. The season of Lent is time to put our past aside to put those shortcomings to the curb and to accept the grace that God has given to each of us, to be totally, totally reliant on God. And as with anything we do in life, that is a choice. We have a choice. You had a choice to come here this evening. We have a choice to follow God. It is a choice to have the discipline to say, I will follow my Lord and Savior. Or we can just not follow the Lord, make our lives incredibly difficult, and go in another direction. I heard an interview the other day with Krista Tippett on NPR. This wasn't on NPR, surprisingly. And she was, at, then was asked by the commentator, what, what do you think about the world events? What do you think about the politics of the day? No, we're not going to get into the politics of the day here this evening. But Ms. Tippett was asked about the politics and, and what, what, do you, what, what do you get out of it? What do you think? What's your reaction? And she said something that I thought was incredible, jumped out at me. She said, I choose not to react. I choose rather to heal. And so in Christian speak, we choose God's grace in our life. We choose to step back from the world for a moment and catch our breath. We choose to look at other people as God's creation, whoever they may be. We choose to heal. We choose to accept Christ into our lives. We can do that, or we can react to anything that we hold dear. But saints, it's a whole lot easier just to consider the other person. Consider reflecting upon Christ. To be of the same mind as Christ who seemed only to react to those who are turning people away from God. Those who condemn without ever thinking about those they are condemning. That's who Jesus had a problem with. No, maybe we need to change our mode, and maybe this is an acceptable time. Maybe this is an acceptable season to change how we see the world. As we open our heart to God's grace, we are able to receive God's grace, the gift of life, to receive eternity. So saints, let us make this a holy, holy Lenten season. A time of being all in. I'm stealing that from the NBA. Being all in for Jesus. Change our mode of living for the better. To reflect the glory of God in our lives. Because now is that acceptable time. And speaking of time... 
I was thinking about giving stuff up for Lent. We go through this every year. I want to give up stuff for Lent. I don't want to give just stuff up for Lent. I want to give something up that's cherished by everybody. I want to give something up for Lent that 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 is that is just so precious that once we use it, it's gone. So I want us all to give this up. I want us over this season of Lent and hopefully beyond our Easter celebration to give up time for Lent. I was going to say go ahead and eat what you want, but I shouldn't do that. But let's give up some time so that we can feed our soul. And here's a challenge to you. Take a minimum of 15 minutes three times a day. If you take more, God bless you. But take 15 minutes. In addition to your other devotion and your other prayer life, take 15 minutes. And as Peter Scavaro writes, stop to breathe the air of eternity during your day. It's easy in the morning, right, because we're already there. But during your day, during school, during work, step back and stop. Let's take a piece of scripture. In the newsletter, which went out yesterday, by the way, are all the scriptures for the season of Lent that we'll be preaching on. Take one of those scriptures, just a little piece of one, once a day, or one for a whole week. Think about that piece of scripture. Take that time away, and then just be quiet. Whereas an old sales manager said, just shut up. You thought it was hard for a salesman to be a, a preacher. It's really hard to shut up. But just take that time and be quiet and let the Lord in your heart for 10, 15 minutes, three times a day, in addition to what you're already doing for the Lord, in addition to your Bible reading, in addition to your devotion. Be silent before the Lord. Give it a shot starting tomorrow. Prepare yourself to receive God. See what happens. Be reconciled to God. Receive our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord is inviting us to take these 40 days and use them as spiritual preparation for our Easter celebration. Remind yourself during these 40 days of Lent of God's grace, of God's mercy, of God's forgiveness, and of God's power. Never forget the Lord. Three times a day, 15 minutes. Take a half hour if you want. Take an hour, you'll be really blessed. Might lose your job. But, but take that time. And we'll